Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can actually add auditing to our web API. We're gonna be adding auditing every time we actually save something to the database, and we'll be able to keep a trace log of what happened. So let's get started. So what I have here is a web API with two controllers, and within these two controllers, I have normal CRUD operations uh, to add it and to manipulate data in the database. And as we can see here, I'm using a SQLite database, and if we open it up, we'll be able to see that this database currently contains one single table called drivers and another single table called Called achievements on top of the migration table and SQLite master. So it's a very simple database only containing two tables and currently we are basically manipulating these tables using our web APIs endpoint. So now what we want to do is we want to actually add the capability that every time we add, update uh, or delete we want to actually have this action audited and traced in a different table. So let's see how we can do this. So first of all inside my entities class library what I want to do is I want to create a new table here and I'm going to create a new class and this I'm going to call audit log and inside here I'm going to have basically a few properties in order for me to specify what are the auditing requirements that I will need. So the first one is going to be basically an ID. Then it's going to be a string of the user who took this action. And for now, I'm just going to put it into system default because basically I don't have any types of uh, login or authorization yet. So I'm just going to put here user default or system user. Then I'm going to have a new property and this is going to be required and I'm going to make it of type string. And this is going to be the entity type that got updated. So in case I'm updating my drivers, this could be drivers I'm updating my achievement it will be achievement the next item is going to be what type of action I have executed against it so I got a property required string and this is going to be the action next it's going to be the timestamp so property date time just make this required as well date time and here we can say timestamp and lastly we're going to basically compare the data that has been changed so I got a property required string and here I'm going to say changes perfect so this is going to be my main uh, database table which is going to contain all of the audit logs of my data database or my application so now what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my AppDB context and I'm going to add it here so now I have my table available for me to, for me to utilize and what I want to do right now is I want to actually override the on saving so if we take a look at my drivers controller what I have here is basically I have anything that I do within through my unit of work I basically call the complete async mechanism and if we go to the complete async mechanism what is it doing it's basically calling the DB context and the save changes async and this is a default implementation that my my application DB conducts provide. So what I want to do right now is I want to actually override my save changes async inside my application DB contacts in order for me to add the auditing capability there. So inside my application DB contacts after my model on creating offering method I'm going to add the following going to be public override task int save changes async is going to take a cancellation token called cancellation token equal default and now here what I want to do is I want to override this and if I want to make sure that this is the right one what I can do is I can go to my db contacts click on go to declarations and here I can look for it save changes async and we can see here this is the method that I want to override and basically we can see it's actually taking task returning a task and taking a cancellation token so this is exactly what I want to override. So if we want, I can take this and I can go back to my application DB contact. And if I put this here, it should be the same thing. Perfect. So now that I have this in place, well, now what I want to do is I want to add the logic in order for me to override the save changes async. And what I want to do here is first, so I want to get the modified entries. So within entity framework, what I have is the capability to check the different entity types. So if they have been updated, if they have been deleted, if they have been added. What I do right now is I want to get this different status for all of the different entities that I have. And based on that, I want to make my decision if I want to actually audit them or not. So whenever I'm doing any types of manipulation of my data, inside entity framework entity framework is smart enough to keep a track of these changes either adding updating deleting etc so what i want to do right now is i want to capture those changes put them in a list and for example anytime that i'm doing any types of these changes i'm going to capture them and audit them so let's see how we can do that so i'm going to put var the modified entity and basically i'm going to tell it here what are the statuses that it needs to capture so i'm going to put change tracker because basically entity framework keep changes tracking of all of the changes that has happened within my data i'm going to put entries and then from there i'm going to specify a condition and within this condition i'm going to specify the state that i want to look for and i'm going to say if it's going to be added so i need i want to audit that and then i'm going to put x dot state equal equal entity state dot deleted as well i want to edit that and i think the last one is going to be modified so x dot state equal equal entity dot modify okay perfect and then i do lastly is i'm going to put it to list so we can utilize them okay great so now i have done that what i want to do right now is i'm going to loop through them so i'm going to put for each modified entities i'm just going to call this me for modify entity and what i want to do here is in case i have anything here inside this list i want to basically create a new audit log so i'm going to put var audit log equal a new audit log 
and I want to specify my information here. So first of all, the action is going to be me dot state dot to string because basically we want to make sure that we are captioning what happened here. And then I'm going to put the timestamp. It's going to be datetime.utc now. That's it. And then I'm going to specify my entity type. So this will be me dot entity dot get type and we're gonna add the name get the name for it perfect and lastly we want to add the actual what has been changed so this will be changes and right now i'm gonna leave it empty because we need to create a method that's gonna actually extract the changes for us so once i have done this all i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna say audit logs dot add and basically i'm gonna add my audit log perfect so once i have done all of this the last step is i want to call the parent uh, save changes async so i'm going to put return base dot save changes async and i'm going to return the cancellation token that i got with it perfect so let's just do a quick summary of what we have done here so we have override the save changes async I basically captured all of the change statuses that I need, which is added, delete, and modify. And then basically what I said here is if there is any entities that has these types of changes, I'm just basically taking this information, creating a new audit log required field inside my database, and I'm saving it to my audit table. And then I'm basically returning the save request to the main save changes async that is part of my DB context. So now what I want to do finally is I want to add this save changes here in order for me or basically create the method here that's going to allow me to actually extract the changes. And this is going to be quite straightforward to do. So I'm going to create a new method i'm going to make it private static string it's going to kind of call it get update and this will have my entity entry and i'm going to call it entry and now that i have this what i want to do is i'm going to build a string builder so i'm going to put var sb equal new string builder and what I want to do here is I'm going to basically try to extract information out of my entity entry that I have here. So, so I'm going to do the following for each entry dot original values dot properties. And here I'm just going to call this prop for properties. And once I have specified this, now inside my for loop, I'm going to get my original value equal prop dot original value entry dot original values. And I'm going to specify here my prop. And I'm going to get the new values var current value equal entry dot current values. And I'm going to specify also here the prop. So once I've done that, I'm just going to do a simple matching if this value is equal to this it means that nothing has changed so i will not be saving it if there's any differences i'm gonna actually add it to my string builder so i'm gonna say if not equal dot if not equal original value and current value then here inside my string builder i'm gonna get sb dot append line and here i'm gonna specify string concatenation where i'm gonna say that prop dot name this is gonna be the property that has changed it's gonna change the, from the original value to the new value Perfect. And once I have done that, the last thing that I want to do is I want to return my string builder. And now that once I have this, I'm going to call this method here. So inside changes, I'm going to put get updates and I'm going to pass here my modified entity. Okay, perfect. So let's do a quick recap. So here, basically, as we said before, I have done, I got my modified entities. I was able to get specific statuses that I want and I'm looping through them. Then for every single one of these modified entities, I'm looping through them. I'm creating an audit log. And within this audit log, I'm trying to capture the update on this object. So here, basically, if there is anything, I'm adding it to my audit log tables and then I'm passing back the save changes async to the base save changes async from the class that we inherited from which is our application db contact and inside my get uh, updates uh, method here what i have is simple as a string builder and basically what i'm doing is i'm taking the entity entry that i have and basically i'm telling it that i want to loop through its properties and through these properties i'm getting the original value and the current value if they don't match what i'm doing is i'm actually saving this information inside if they do match i don't need to save them so now that i have this what i want to do is i'm just going to run my application and now that my application is running i'm gonna go to postman so first let's start by actually doing a post on a driver so i'm gonna add a new driver i'm gonna call it muhammad3 and i'm gonna change my driver number to let's say 12 and then i'm gonna click on send and we forgot to basically do the migration for the audit logs which is completely expected because we didn't do it so let's stop this and now let's open our terminal and start doing the right migrations so i'm gonna navigate to my formula one and so cd formula one data service and then from here i'm gonna put let's clear this up let's make this a bit bigger so you're able to see it on the screen okay perfect so i'm just gonna put dot net ef migrations add i'm gonna call it audit and i'm gonna specify my startup project which is gonna be my my formula one api so this should create my migration script right now for my new table perfect now that i have my migration in place now i'm gonna put dot net ef database state and i'm gonna specify also my startup project and this is gonna be a formula one api and now this should be able, basically able to create my table inside my database we can see it's done successfully now if i run my application again and i go back to postman 
And now if I try to create this driver, we'll be able to see that it has been created successfully. I'm able to get my information. And now the test is if I go back here and I open my database, let's make this a bit smaller. I'm going to go to my AppDB contact, uh, my AppDB, sorry, and I'm going to refresh this. So we can see refresh and we can see here I have a new table called audit logs. And if I open this, we'll be able to see that I have a new table in place, a new record in place, which is the driver entity, which we have added. And I created the added action. And basically because there's no changes, I'm only adding a new driver i was able to basically add this record here so now let's see if i want to try to update this record what's going to happen i'm going to put a put and i'm going to change my driver number from 12 to let's say 15 and i'm going to put 3a 3a on for my name so now if i do this i click on send we got a 204 if i refresh this data here okay maybe we have a problem with the so i think i know the problem so now let's get all drivers and basically here i have muhammad i'm just going to take muhammad's id and i'm going to go to the put update this id this is what happens when you copy paste and now i'm going to click on send again and this should work right now perfect now if we go back to my database and i'm going to click on refresh we'll be able to see that now i was able to modify my table and basically we can see that the driver number has been changed from 12 to 15 and let's see if we can make this a bit bigger from 12 to 15 and what else and Muhammad changed from Muhammad 3 to Muhammad 3a. Okay, perfect. So now that I'm able to actually capture the added and the modified, now what I want to do is I'm going to try to do a delete. So I'm just going to take the ID again. I'm going to add it here to the end. And I'm going to remove the body and then click on delete. We got a 204. If I refresh this, we got a modified, which is going to be a delete. And basically it says that status has changes from one to zero because this is the delete action that I wanted. Okay, perfect. Now we are actually able to capture all of these different changes. As you can see here, I was able to make, to make sure that I'm auditing every single request coming in. And basically the way to do that is basically by trying to override the on save async that my entity frame will utilize in order for it to save the changes into my database. So within this video, what we're able to do is we're actually creating an audit log through all of the different changes inside my database for the edit delete and update and through that i was able to actually monitor and manage all of these different changes inside my database i created a new table and this table will be responsible for managing all of these different changes inside my database and basically if i need to check what were the previous information what are the new information here we're actually able to see that we are actually able to capture that directly through our table because on the on save changes async we're able to actually capture those different information so i hope this video was helpful please like share it. please like share and subscribe if it was if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day